What's up, guys? This is your boy DZD, aka The Drink Gang, Purple World Entertainment, live from the Dungeon Palace Studios once again. Thank you guys for tuning into the video. This is a very, very, very special video for you guys. It has highly been requested and I finally got the chance to put it together for you guys. I'm gonna show you guys in detail how I set up a mixing session inside of my DAW after I have composed the beat inside of the NPC software. Now, before I even jump into the video, I just wanna let you guys know that this is gonna be a lot of information for you guys to take in. So I've broken the video down into two parts. That way you guys can digest the information and take it in at a very good pace. So this video is just part one of a two series video that will be continuing. That way you can pick up where this video leaves off and you won't miss a thing. So in this video, I'm basically gonna give you guys a basic template on how I get my session started inside of the Reaper DAW when I'm ready to mix a beat. You guys are gonna get some really good tips that you can use inside of your own DAW whenever you're ready to start mixing your beats. You're gonna get to see in detail how I position all of my tracks inside of the Reaper software. That way I can come out with a very good mix and I can move through my session very quickly without any holdups. So I'm excited to get this video started and I know you guys are as well. So let's get started on part one of this two part tutorial. Let's do it. I have this beat that's running inside of the MPC software. I'm gonna play this for you real quick. Just a nice little beat for the purpose of this tutorial. I've already stemmed this track out and I put all of the exported files inside of a folder. Uh, for you guys that don't know how to do that or don't know how to get your tracks out of um, the software like this, I'm going to leave a link to a video in the video description. That way you guys can check out how to export your tracks in order to show you how to get to this point. So once I have all of my tracks inside a folder, I'm going to go down and pull up the folder. It's here. Beats by day 2020. This is the folder right here and it's in a stems folder. See, I have the, the MPC project file, I have the MCC project data file, and then I have a stems folder where all of, my, all of my stems are. I keep them all in the same folder, that way everything can be organized, and it's all inside of one folder. So now I have the stems folder, and this is all of my audio that comes out of the MPC software ready to go. So now we're gonna go ahead on and pull up Reaper. Now the first thing we're gonna do is, I'm gonna go to my folder, and I'm gonna look at the BPM. The BPM is 74. So 70, 174, we're gonna change the BPM inside of Reaper to 174. Okay, so now that we got that done, now when we drag the tracks in, everything is gonna match. Okay, so we don't need this audio track because we have no audio inside of the NPC software and we don't need this drum program because when I stem all of my drums out, they all end up on separate tracks and it mutes this drum program. So we don't need that. Okay, so let's delete those. And then we're going to highlight everything and put it inside of the Reaper DAW. Boom. Obviously, we want to separate tracks. Okay, now that the tracks are separated, this is what I have now. We're going to take the audio tail off inside of the NPC software. I always leave an audio tail of one. That way it gives me a little bit of the reverb. If you don't do that, the audio will loop right here. This is where it's going to loop. But it'll cut off all of these, these tails. See these tails right here, all of these tails after nine, one right here, See it will go eight, two, three, four, and go back to one. But if you don't, it'll stop right here and it'll cut off these tails. So you don't want to cut that off. You always want to have that available. And then inside of your software, all you do is just go ahead on and drag the loop. That way it loops now. But it's like having it and not needing it versus needing it and you don't have this tail. So always put that extra tail inside of the NPC software whenever you export your files, that way you have that. All right, I now have all of the tracks. They are all labeled now. If you notice, I have the piano melody, piano chords, pad, bells, 808, kick, clap, hats, third hat, open hi-hat, a percussion, percussion two, and a crash. 
Um, this is supposed to be, let's make that head two, not three. Now we got all our tracks labeled. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put these tracks in folders. I need to make a drum folder and I need to make an instrument folder that those are going to serve as my buses, my drum bus and my instrument bus. That way I can affect all my tracks separately, but I also can affect them as a group. If I want a group of instruments and a group of drums, So we're going to double click down here, give us one track and double click and give us two tracks. We're going to label one in all caps. I do drums and then I do the other one instruments. So I'm going to drag instruments all the way up. Very, very easy way to create uh, folders and Reaper is just go to the icon right here and then you hit it and it's going to dock everything else underneath it. And then you find the last track that you want inside of the folder, which would be my bells. That's my last instrument. And then I would hit the folder again and then hit it again and it brings it out. Now I have all of these, these tracks underneath inside of this instrument folder. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing for the drums. I'm going to drag the drums up to where my first drum starts. And then I'm going to hit the hit the, the folder again. It's going to dock all of that. Then I'm going to go to the last one and hit it twice. That way, anything I create after this, it will take it out of this and put it in its own in, in its uh, own track. Okay, now I want to pull up my mixer. I'm going to hit control M that pulls up my mixer. This just shows all of my tracks inside of my mixer inside of the Reaper mixer. And I want to go to my instruments folder and I want to move that up a bit. That way I can recognize it. So let's drag that up just a bit. I like the way you can resize though your different tracks inside of here. And I want to go to my drum folder as well. My drum bus as well. And we're going to we're going to bring that up a bit. Now I know what my folders are and I know everything after that is inside of those those uh, those buses. So now we're going to go on and color code the tracks real quick. That way we can um, we can find everything real quickly. OK, so my instruments, I always do a, a blue piano chords. We're going to do those green and then our pad and our bells. Let's do those a purple color. I always make sure that all of my tracks are, are, are the same type of colors. That way I always know where my mixes are and I know what I'm doing. Drum track is always red. OK, the 808 track is always a light red. OK, my kick and my clap. Always green. OK, my hi hats are always yellow. And then any percussion sounds I have. Are always orange. And then my crash. Is always purple. OK, so there is my. That's my my tracks right there. I have everything color coded, ready to go, everything labeled, everything laid out. I have everything in buses and I can see what I'm doing really, really easily inside of the DAW. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of these tracks. OK, and I'm going to go to this little knob right here. This is the volume knob for the track level. I'm not going to lower it from my fader. I'm going to lower the tracks from my volume level right here, the track level. That way it doesn't affect my faders. It's not going to affect my plugins. It's not going to affect anything like that. And the level is still going to decrease. So I'll always make sure I go in and I lower every track, the volume down negative six. Okay. So negative six dB and look at what that does. When you go back to the, the mixer, everything is going to be ready for my effects and anything that I want to do to the tracks without peaking. Now, the reason why I do this is because I know that when the, when the beat came out of the NPC software, when the beat came out of here, I know my sound was good and ready to go. I'm going to play it through here and notice the levels. So I know the levels and the sound and everything is good coming out of the NPC software. So when I started to bus everything in Reaper, that's what gave me the the uh, peaking levels. I started to group these tracks up and put them in different buses. So it, it took that sound and it, it mashed it together. So what I do is lower everything down negative six. That way I still have the same exact sound coming out of the NPC software into my DAW, but I just lowered everything all the way across the board. That way, whatever effects I'm going to put on compressors, anything I'm going to do to beef this track up, then I'm ready to do so. And I will still stay under peaking. Okay. Now the next thing that I want to do is I want to make 
my track for my tag so I'm gonna go on and create another track I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna label that tag that's gonna be my B tag okay and I'm gonna raise that up just a little bit to make it stand out okay then I'm gonna create another track and I'm gonna call that mix bus okay and then we're gonna pull that up just a little bit more to make it stand out and then I'm gonna create another track and I'm gonna call that print track P R T R K that's my print track okay and I'm gonna explain to you what a print track does in a bit okay so now I have those three tracks made the next thing I want to do is I want to take my drum bus and my instrument bus and run them to the mix bus take them out of the master channel right now they're playing through this master I, I don't want them to play through the master I want them to play through this mix bus and then this mix bus is gonna play through the master so let's do that we're gonna go here we're gonna hold control and we're gonna highlight both of our tracks then we're gonna grab the master channel right here and we're gonna drag it to the patch cable we're gonna drag it to the mix bus boom see how I put out one sin here and it put one sin here so I know that's going to the mix bus now I'm gonna go ahead on and I'm gonna uh, right click on the master channel and take them out of the master so they're not playing through this master anymore they're playing through this mix bus check it out And I know that because if I mute the drums, not only the instruments are gonna play through the mix bus. Same thing, if I mute the, the instruments, then the drums are gonna play through the mix bus. Okay, now I have total control over what I wanna do with the instruments, with the drums, and I also have total control over I wanna, what I wanna do with the whole track on the mix bus. The mix bus is where all of my effects go that I'm gonna affect the whole entire track with once I do everything individually to the track that I wanna do, which is really not gonna be much simply because we know we had a very, very good sound coming out of the NPC software. So it's not much I'm gonna need to do whenever it comes down to mixing this track inside of Reaper. And that's the secret to my mixing. I make sure I get a very, very good sound coming out of my software into my DAW. That way, when I get to this mixing point, I don't really have to do anything but just kind of tweak the track a little bit, make sure everything is nice, make sure anything, nothing isn't peaking, and just put a few, a few enhancements on it, and the beat is pretty much mixed. That's how I mix in 10 to 15 minutes. It doesn't take me long to mix a track simply because I know I have good sound coming out of the MPC software. That's a mixture of good instrument selection. That's a mixture of good drum sounds that I use. That's a mixture of making sure that while I'm moving through my track, when I'm making it in the MPC software, I make sure that I'm doing some minor tweaks with EQs, things like that. You guys see me doing that inside of the track to make all my sounds fit together. That's what's called a static mix. I get a good static mix going inside of the MPC, a mix before the mix, and make sure my sound is good. That way when it comes into the DAW, everything is ready to go, and all I have to do is just make a few little tweaks, and everything is good. I'm going to end part one of the tutorial here because I know that this was a lot of information for you guys to take in, especially some of you newcomers that are new to the channel and wondering how I get this set up inside of my software. Rewind part one if you need to, that way you can take it in and you can apply these same strategies inside of your software and you'll get the same exact result. You guys don't want to miss part two of this tutorial because I'm going to take you through a few plugins that you can use in any software on your mixes that will pretty much get them on point every single time. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell, that way you don't miss out on part two. If you got any value from this video, make sure you guys smash that thumbs up button and also drop me a comment below. If you have any questions, I'll try and help you guys out as much as I can. This is the Kid DZD, aka The Drink King, live from the Dungeon Palace Studios, and I will catch you guys in part two of this tutorial. Until then, peace out.